interesting. So, you know, I went to elementary school in the 1950s, and schools were still locally controlled then. Right. You did not have federal aid to education, which also meant you didn't have federal control of education, right. nor state control. It was largely, mm -hmm. there might have been some state overriding regulations, you know, but largely it was the local school board and so mm -hmm. if you lived in a small town which i lived in you know they knew you <laughs> and they knew yeah, your exactly. parents and the teachers knew your parents and mm -hmm. you were a human being and it, and you kind of when that's true you're kind of treated as a human being and so it was it was a lot friendlier kind of right, atmosphere right. i'm not sure what it was like in the cities but and most people who went into the education no of course teachers were grossly underpaid then they're not underpaid right. now but they were underpaid then and and they were grossly underpaid and they were exploited because most of them were women and what else jobs could women get besides that right. and nursing right. and airline stewardess, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was, uh, and so you had a lot of brilliant women becoming teachers. Exactly. <laughs> they, were, exactly. they were good, they were smart and they liked kids and they were in charge. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there was nobody above them. There might be a principal, but largely the principal That's knew right. them and. They, were, they could do what they wanted. So if they decided like, oh, everybody looks restless today, let's just go out and run around. Or I had a teacher right, right. who would sometimes in the middle of the school day, she'd say, you know, we've, we've got a scavenger hunt today going mm -hmm. on all over town. <laughs> a little surprise scavenger hunt. We'd spend yep. days yep. decorating the class around holiday seasons. We'd do all kinds. We'd put on plays in the middle of the That's school right. day just because the teacher thought this would be fun and that we'd learn probably more doing that kind of stuff than studying those silly books yeah, that yeah. were assigned, by, you know, that we're supposed to read. Yeah. So when, you know, when it's local, when it's, when the people know who, who you are, I don't want to say that that was always the case. I'm sure there were also sure. terrible teachers. And there were yeah, also yeah. cruel and there's teachers. there's huge bureaucratic uh, systems in the cities. So Yeah, and know, in the city, and, and you would have, and, you know, admittedly, these were little, pretty much all white schools in the Midwest. So I wasn't dealing with the problems of, right. of discrimination and that people in the cities were just dealing with, at least as much then as, as they are now. So, right. So I don't want to romanticize too much what schools were like in the 1950s, but for me, and I think for the majority of people, they were a lot better just primarily because there was less of them and because the right. teachers had more autonomy. Mm -hmm. I give talks mm -hmm. sometimes to teachers about how kids are being controlled and, and I'll get a question at the end and the teacher will say, well, you know, we're no more free than the kids are. That's right. We ha yeah. We're required to do what we're required to do, to which I always say, that's not entirely true. <laughs> you could quit. <laughs> well, and yeah, the kids, yeah. most of those kids can't. <laughs> this is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.